let's take a look under the hood. Here you see the B series 1800cc engine, um, more or less stolen from an MGB, which I'm very happy about that we've got the extra power um, and the five bearing crank, etc., of this wonderful engine. At the top, you'll see two carburetors, the two SUs, and then attached to the carburetors, you see a couple of filters. These particular filters were a really tight squeeze into this vehicle. And in fact, the one on the right actually um, has been modified so that it doesn't hit the chassis uh, at the top of the filter. So this is, the, uh, this is what we're trying to um, overcome here is the warm air that's going into those two filters. And we're going to talk about why the, the air is so warm under the hood and what the deficit is in performance. This is what we've replaced it with. You see this manifold, basically a high temperature uh, plastic, and uh, it comes from Moss Motors Incorporated, as you might expect. A relatively simple device. Remove the two filters, put this device in place with a gasket, and then you can uh, either hook a filter to it directly, or you can do what I've done and take a hose to the front of the vehicle. So let's talk about why the air is so warm and why that's not so good for the uh, engine and for the performance of the vehicle. So at the right, you see those blue arrows. Um, that shows the cool air coming in through the grill and going into the radiator. So let's say that's at um, 25 Celsius. So there's the air going into the radiator. And of course, it's going to pick up heat as it goes through the radiator. That's, that's the job of the radiator and so coming out of the radiator we're going to be pretty close to coolant temperature. Um, the effectiveness of that radiator is probably 85-90%. So you're going to get most of the way to the coolant temperature which could be 85 Celsius, could be 100 Celsius. So the air is going to be pretty warm coming out of there. And then finally of course You've got heat being radiated and convected from the exhaust manifold and from the engine block and basically from anything that's uh, running at a temperature above ambient. So those are the heat sources, the air coming out of the radiator and then the radiated heat coming off the exhaust manifold and the engine itself. And you can see there's a, an insulated shield between the exhaust manifold and the fuel system. So it's pretty compact in there and um, kind of difficult quarters, I guess. So what are we going to do? Well, this is classic cars driven by data. So we're going to show you some data. And the first thing we want to do is talk about the device we use to record temperature. This is a thermocouple data logger. If, uh, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, it's 885988, four channel K-type SD logger, has an SD data card that can be transferred to a laptop and straight into Excel. Pretty inexpensive. Um, I forget exactly how much it is, but uh, reasonably inexpensive. And you can see it's got two thermocouples with the yellow K-type connectors, and it could take another two. This, this is just illustrative. And you can see the four temperature readings there. And the, there's a record button. So you'll see the little red, little orange REC, that's for record. So when you want to record, you just hold down that button until it goes into record mode. And then when you're done, you hold that button and it pops out of record mode. This is the form of the data. So this is a pretty typical example taken, in fact, from the MG that you see in the picture here. Um, you can see the interval is two seconds. Uh, column A is one that I've manufactured. It's simply the time base, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 seconds. You've got the date, you've got the time, and then you've got the temperature of channel 1, 2, 3, and 4 and then an indication of the units. And of course, from there, you can plot anything you wish and uh, do any kind of manipulation that you want to do. So anyway, that's how we're going to be uh, collecting the data around the uh, cool air intake at the carburetors, at the grill, 
maybe above the windshield to get a nice second version of ambient temperature. And I'll probably put one on the radiator top tank as well to give me an idea of when the thermostat's open and what's going on with the top tank temperature. Here you see the thermocouple loggers. I've got a couple of them. And in this case, I was running five thermocouples. The other thing I'd say on my cell phone there, which is an iPhone, I'm running a, an app called SensorLog, which is a one hertz, so one reading per second, um, GPS that gives you velocity or speed, and you can calculate acceleration, etc. from that. It also gives you the GPS coordinates. So I actually recommend SensorLog if you don't have deep pockets and you don't want to buy a V-Box, uh, which will log at much higher rates than that. But for this vehicle, you know, I think sensor log is, ac is accurate enough to give us a feel for what was going on with vehicle speed during the data sampling of, of temperature. So let's look at some data. Um, this is with the, with the filters on the car. So this is the original configuration um, with what I was describing as the warm air under hood being ingested through the filters, through the carbs and then into the engine. So it's basically this configuration here. So this is temperature. Uh, I've shown it in Fahrenheit and uh, Celsius. And the, uh, the red curve is the air temperature at the carb intake, while the blue curve is the ambient temperature uh, outside. So it's um, the lowest temperature available to the car is the blue line. So the ambient roughly 30 degrees, pretty warm day, 86 Fahrenheit. But if you notice, which I'm sure you have, when the thermostat opens, that on the red curve where it jumps upwards, that's when the thermostat opens. You can see the radiator is then pouring warm air into the underhood area. And that's when the engine suddenly starts to breathe this warmer air. And you can see the average temperatures difference is pretty high. So the difference between those two curves or the heat pickup or the temperature rise of the air going from fresh air at the grill all the way to the carb intake is about 90 degrees Fahrenheit temperature change or 32 Celsius temperature change. So, you know, that's that's a lot. And the density of the air going into the engine on the red curve will be about five to eight percent less than the density of the air could if we were able to get fresh air into the engine from the get-go. So your torque curve, your power curve is going to be down five to eight percent at full throttle because you're just not going to be not going to have the density of the incoming air charge. This is the vehicle speed recorded on my iPhone using sensor log. I think it's accurate enough at one hertz. And you can see we were buzzing along at 50 miles an hour. And then we got into some stop and go at about 80, 800 seconds. And eventually we stopped. Anyway, that's the trip. So this is concerning for me, this large temperature rise. And that's why I was interested in the cool air intake. So we've been for a drive. Um, we've shown you some temperature measurement. And now let's take a look at the temperatures with the cool air intake. So this is the configuration that we're looking at now with the MOS cool air intake attached to the two carbs. Let's take a look at the temperature difference uh, going on here. So here we see temperature again versus time and some pretty high temperatures here. The red line is the under hood temperature which you're now familiar with at the carbs. The good news is that the carbs are not breathing that air. They're breathing the blue curve, which is the um, temperature measured at the manifold inside the cool air intake manifold directly. Um, and you can see it's a good deal cooler than the under hood uh, air temperature. So this is the this is the improvement in air density and um, and air temperature. Let's just look at the, uh, the next one here. So the, the delta temperature, the green curve, is about well, about uh, 25 Celsius 
or maybe uh, 40 Fahrenheit. So 25 Celsius, again, is, is a big number. It's something you could do without. You'd really like fresh air into the engine. It's going to be good for the engine from a knock octane perspective, thermal load perspective, and very definitely from a maximum torque and power perspective, where, as we said earlier, it's about 5 to 8 percent different. This is the uh, duty cycle. So we did some 30 mile an hour stop and go, and then we did some freeway at higher speeds, at least 50, anyway, 40, 50 miles an hour with a peak of 60. The picture really doesn't change very much. The underhood temperature is pretty stable and the air intake to the engine is pretty stable. So pretty good news here. It shows that the cool air intake when breathing from just behind the grill is pretty attractive and uh, it's got a lot of advantage. So now let's uh, take a look at the installation and how we did this. So here you see the final install. There's the manifold attached to the two carburetors at top left. I procured some hose, two and a half inch hose. I prefer to put two hose clamps on at any junction if there's enough room to do that kind of belt and suspenders or belt and braces. Um, I can't afford for that to come off. I can't afford for it to leak. So that's, uh, that's the way I like to do it. It was convenient to be able to thread it through the, um, the circular feature just above the radiator there. That's generally used for um, right-hand drive heating and cooling hose. But the, since this is left-hand drive, the, uh, the hose is on the other side and that's vacant, so that's what I used. I came straight through there, round in front of the radiator, and in front of the radiator you can just about make out the hose clips that are connecting the hose to the, uh, to the filter. We'll take a closer look at that. So there's the hose threaded through that circular feature, which is pretty convenient. And this is what's going on behind the grill. So I installed a little bracket, which I'll show you shortly. I used a hose clamp to connect the uh, filter assembly to the bracket. That's got it grounded solidly to the car, nice and nice and firm. And then I was able to attach the hose uh, with the help of a short uh, length of uh, two and a half inch PVC piping. And again, liberal use of hose clamps to uh, ensure we don't get any any problems with hoses coming undone or leaking. This is the little bracket that I installed. So it's just as simple. It's a couple of um, shelf brackets, if you will, fairly small, just two and a half inches or so. And I attached them right behind the grill. And then I used a hose clamp to connect the filter to the bracket. This is a close-up of the filter. The hose clamp on the left was used to connect the assembly to the bracket. And the hose clamp on the right clearly was to uh, connect the PVC pipe to the hose coming off the K&N filter. So there we have it. That's the, uh, that's the total install. It would have taken me probably less than an hour to do the whole thing. And I think it's a very worthwhile improvement. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, hit the subscribe button and we'll be uh, seeing you in the next episode.